Christy for a, such a kind introduction, but how about a round of applause for her? She's amazing, guys. Oh my God. She's phenomenal. Thank you. So, namaste and good afternoon to all of my friends here, my brothers, my sisters, fellow Indians, and uh, fellow Americans. It is my honor and privilege to congratulate all of us on the 71st Independence Day of India. So congratulations on freedom. While we celebrate the freedom, we must take a moment to reflect, to know how precious freedom is and what we have, what we have today. India was under British rule for nearly 200 years. Let's take a minute to think through what 200 years is. 200 years is you know, I see kids everywhere, right? There are kids five years old, 10 years old, infants 15 years old. 200 years is like my grandfather, my great-grandfather, my great-great-great-grandfather. We're talking about 10 generations, 10 generations of lineage under tyranny. Imagine what that does to human psychology and human spirit. With all the generational struggles and sacrifices, India triumphed to achieve freedom at the midnight hour on August 15, 1947. Over 300 million Indians were free of tyranny, free to make choices, free to breathe in free India. India's first Prime Minister, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, addressed the nation by sharing, and I want to take a moment to quote him. Long years ago, we made a tryst with destiny now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge not wholly or in full measure but very substantially at the stroke of the midnight hour when the world sleeps india will awake to life and freedom as we all know india is an ancient nation we have history and cultural heritage of thousands of years uh, from ancient scriptures to satellites from practice of yoga to bollywood you know, uh, in more recent past, the Y2K. Y2K to a significant presence in Silicon Valley um, by the Indian community and the Indian leaders. So India has had many ups and downs. Our freedom reminds us of the sacrifice of our freedom fighters. So we see a lot of pictures in the back. Uh, on this occasion, we must remember those people who went willingly to the gallows of death for freedom. We are breathing today as free Indians, or I should say Asian Indians in the United States of America, thanks to Mahatma Gandhi, Sardar Patel, Pandit Nehru, and many, many countless leaders, and many, many countless people who struggle to work towards freedom. Let me switch gears for a minute and share a story with you. Let me share a story with you about a man who was an affluent zamindar in 1930s and 1940s in the northwest part of India. Now, a province known Sindh, okay? Now, for those who don't know what Zamindar is, Zamindar is a person who owns land and who leases land to farmers. So as I continue with the story, over 30 farmers, families, relied on the livelihood by farming on his land, on this, on this Zamindar land. A very kind, a very generous, intelligent, ambitious man who was extremely hardworking man with seventh grade education, with a wife and an infant, found himself fleeing to save his family during the partition in 1947. So he fleed in 1947. A man who left hundreds of acres of land became a refugee in the northern part of, of what we now know New India. In years to come, he repeated his success in the new India despite being a refugee. I'm proud to tell you this man was my grandfather, Mr. T.D. Mandian. God bless his soul. A man who taught me a lot of things. Growing up in Allahabad, India, my grandfather told me, among various reasons, India was free due to persistence due to determination, due to discipline, because violence was not a choice. 
I'll come back to his story in just a second, but I want to quote Mr. Modi, our Prime Minister Modi, in his recent speech he stated, the collective resolve and strength of the people got freedom for our country. No one is big, no one is small. We're all equal. He further states, if each one of us, everybody, strive with a new resolve, with a new energy, a new strength, we are stronger collectively as a group. I'll close my speech with advice from my grandfather. If you commit to a cause, please obsess to it. Never, never, never give up. And be disciplined to follow your dream. Discipline means sacrifices. Educate, but education alone will not get us there. If you are a talented human being, or if you are a genius like Albert Einstein, both of those, without persistence and determination, remain unnoticed. I know success to us in the United States is not foreign. We're executives, we are CEOs, we are doctors, we are IT engineers, we are business owners. Above all, we are fathers. We are committed fathers, we are committed mothers, we are committed sons, we are committed daughters with our rich family values. We must remind ourselves that we as Indians and Americans of Asian descent have a unique responsibility and a privilege to serve this great nation as well as the great nation of our heritage. While we are collectively very successful, tremendous work lies ahead of us to add to the greatness of India and to add to the greatness of United States of America. To all of us, all of us, and I see a lot of people in the back, whether you are five years old or 50 years, or whether you are 80 years young, my plea to you is to dream, dream big, achieve big, serve big. With that, Jai Hind, God bless India, God bless United States of America, and God bless us all. Thank you.